All right, a surface. So a lot of definitions here that you need to know. A surface is a connected set of points in space having the thickness of a point. All right, so a surface, when you think of, um, they give the, the example here of a soccer ball. The surface of the soccer ball is like the skin of a soccer ball that goes around it. That's your surface. Um, of course, with a soccer ball, you actually have a little bit more thickness than just a point. But what they're trying to get across is that they're talking about the area that connects all the space in between the um, edges. All right. The next thing we look at here on this page is the definition of a sphere. A sphere is a set of all points in space that are a given distance from a point. The sphere's center. Any segment from the center to the point is called the radius. All right, so this is different than a circle. In a circle, it is the set of points equidistance from the center in the plane. All right, so a circle is going to be a flat figure. A circle is going to be a flat figure. Um, a sphere is going to be three-dimensional. So a circle would be like this base. That is the set of points equidistance from the center in that plane. That's the circle. But a sphere is in space. So it's the set of points equidistance from the circle in space. All right. So then you get a three-dimensional figure when you talk about space versus a plane. A plane is going to create a circle. Space is going to create a sphere. So it's still the set of points equidistance from the center but you're talking about whether it's in a plane, a circle, or in, a, in space, which is a sphere. All right. When anytime they talk about space, they're talking about a third dimension, not just like length and width, two dimension. All right. And then the last one they talk about on this particular page is a cone. All right. A cone is the union of a region and all segments that connect to the boundary of the region with a specific non-coplanar point, all right? And so they gave us some examples of what we do not typically think of as a cone. When we think of a cone, we think of like an ice cream cone, all right? We think of the perfect cylinder type base or circle base going up to a point. But the example that they give you here in the book is actually any region. So if you have the region and all the segments going up to a point, it is still a cone even though the base is not necessarily circular. When we think cone, we think of a circular base going up to one point. But this can actually be any shape. It doesn't even have to be a defined geometric shape like a triangle or a square or a trapezoid. It can be any shape like they've given us here, any shape and everything, every point from here is going up to one point off of that plane, one point off of that plane. So then the next, next one to actually defines cylinder. Cylinder is the union of two regions of the same size and shape in different parallel planes and the set of segments that connect them. Um, we typically think of a cylinder as a circle on the top and the bottom, right? Um, what they're telling is you it's any shape that is identical um, on parallel planes and then everything that connects them in between on the, out, the exterior. Not necessarily the interior of it, but it is the shape that are identical on top and bottom and the, the um, points that connect them in between, okay? And so we think of a cylinder as a circular base, but by definition, it is actually any similar figures that are connected and they're on parallel planes here, all right? Um, and so then they actually define these... Um, in a little bit more terms of what you're used to. A cylinder or cone is circular if each base is a circular region, all right? So when we think of cone, we think of a circular cone or a circular cylinder. We just call them such because that's what we're so used to seeing. But they are circular, um, meaning they have a circle base. This is what you're used to when you think of cone and cylinder. You're thinking a circular cone and a circular cylinder. A cone with a polygon region. So polygon meaning that you have some other shape. And I think I might have one. All right. A polygon region such as this one has a square base um, is called a pyramid. So a cone with a polygonal region as its base, that's what you're used to thinking of as a pyramid. All right. So a cone that has a polygon base. And a cylinder with a polygon region as its base is a prism. All right, so a prism then is a cylinder that has a polygon. 
All right, so if it has a polygon as its base, it is called a prism. So prisms are um, a type of cylinder that have a polygon as its base. Pyramids are a type of cone that have a polygon as its base. And the type of cylinder and cone that you are used to seeing are circular ones. They have circles as their bases, all right? So those are the type of three-dimensional figures that we're gonna talk about. Now I will say um, that you have some special cases like ones that you don't see often. This is called an oblique circular cylinder. The cylinders that you're used to seeing are called right because they are perpendicular in, in how they are the um, sides versus the base. But you can have an oblique, meaning it's shifted. Um, and then they've given you this, a right square pyramid. We are accustomed to seeing right pyramids, right prisms, right cones, meaning they are um, the base compared to the line that goes directly from the top of it is is a right angle. That's what we're used to seeing. So the oblique is where it looks like it's tilted. The right are the ones that you're used to dealing with, that you're used to seeing those three-dimensional figures for. All right, so let's look at this example at the bottom. Use the right square pyramid to illustrate and name the above following. So there are specific features of these that have names. The first one is its vertex, all right? Its vertex. For a pyramid, the vertex is the point that they all go towards. In this case, would be point D. So the vertex is the point that all of that um, base is heading towards to one concise point. That is the vertex, all right? The vertex. For a pyramid, the base is the... Um, polygonal figure there. The base is the figure and it will have one base. That's for a pyramid. For something like a prism, it will have two bases. They are identical, but your, your prisms will have two bases. Your pyramids will only have one. Pyramids will have one base. Prisms will have two. All right. Lateral face. The lateral face is the face that's going up to the vertex or for a prism up to the other base. So for a pyramid, your lateral face will always be a triangle, all right? Because it is going from a side up to a point. That's a triangle. For a prism, your lateral face will always be a rectangle, all right? It will always be a rectangle. You're going from a side to a parallel side, and it forms a rectangle, all right? So your lateral face for a pyramid will always be a triangle, your lateral face for a prism will always be a rectangle, all right? Prisms have two bases, so then it forms a rectangle. Pris um, pyramids have one base, so then it forms a triangle because it's going up to a point. And then a lateral edge. The lateral edge is where two lateral faces meet. It is a line segment. This will be a line segment for both a pyramid and a prism, all right? Where the two faces meet forms a line. All right, and so that is called the lateral edge or it forms a line segment. That's called the lateral edge. A polyhedron is a closed surface made up of polygonal regions. Each polygonal region forming the surface is a face of the polyhedron, all right? Polyhedron is a closed surface made up of polygonal regions, all right? And so they've given you this list over to the side of types of um, regions based on how many faces they have, all right? Tetrahedron, pentahedron, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca, dodeca. Um, icosa is a different one, icosahedron. Um, we haven't seen that with 20, um, but you do see it with polyhedrons a little bit more. But you'll notice that your prefixes are all the same as your polygons, okay? Your prefixes are the same as your polygons, um, and then it's just how many sides you have. And they've given us some examples here. All right. So let's look at two ways to classify these. The first one is just based on how many faces it has. How many faces it has. All right. And they will count the base as a face on these. So they will count the base as one of the faces. So let's look at this first one. Um, and basically because you can... For this one, you can turn it any direction here. We have one, right? And then we have two here on the right-hand side. 
We have three over here on the left-hand side, and then you have this back one that might be kind of hard to see, but that is back here, all right? So this is technically four faces, right? Four. So this is going to be a tetrahedron. So this one's going to be a tetrahedron, all right? Tetrahedron. Now, another way to classify this is by calling it a, a pyramid, all right? This is also a type of pyramid. The way you name your pyramids is what the base is. For this one, it's a triangle base, right? This is a pyramid with a triangle base. So this would also be called a triangular pyramid. So if you look in your book, it'll classify this as not only a tetrahedron, but also a triangular pyramid, also a triangular pyramid, all right? Look at B. Now for B, you do not count that middle where it looks like the two meet, all right? When you're counting these faces, you literally only count the faces that you can see from the outside. And so this is going to have eight, eight faces. It is an octahedron, but this is not a special type. It's not a pyramid. Pyramids specifically have um, base and they go to one point. So it is only an octahedron. All right, look at C. C has six faces, six, just like a cube would. So this would be a hexahedron. This is also a type of prism, all right? This is also a type of pr prism. For this prism, I have a quadrilateral as my base, all right? So for this one, I have a quadrilateral as my base. So this would be a quadrilateral prism, quadrilateral prism. So when you're naming it, if it is a pyramid or a prism, you're going to name it using its base as well, using its base as well. Look at D. D also has six faces. If you'll notice, the base is a pentagon. The base is a pentagon. So you're gonna have five triangles going up and you have the pentagon itself, all right? So you have five lateral faces and the pentagon. So that's gonna be six altogether. So that also makes this a hexahedron, but this is also a type of pyramid. You would call this a pentagonal pyramid, a pentagonal pyramid. It's a pyramid with a pentagon base, all right? So you can name it that way as well. And then the last one, all right, the last one actually has 20 faces, and that's a little hard to see. But you can tell from the top, this is a pentagon here. Um, well, actually, it doesn't look like quite a pentagon. One, two, three, maybe five. Um, so this is actually going to have 20, all right? So it's a pentagon here, which is five, a pentagon here, which is five, that's 10, and then you have 10 um, more for each of those, right? You have 10 more for each of those, question. This page actually points out is at the bottom, all right? At the bottom, you see they give you an example of one that actually has a hole in the middle of it. Um, we are all, the whole time we're gonna study, we're gonna study, study simple polyhedrons, simple meaning they do not have a hole in them, right? But this is actually a type of polyhedron here um, that you wouldn't be accustomed to seeing normally in like a geometric setting. Um, just because it has a hole in the center, it still has, meets all the qualifications for a polyhedron. It's just not simple. Think about simple curve versus a curve that's not simple. Um, this is not a simple one, but it is still an example of a polyhedron. All right. So flip the page. They actually define regular for you. Regular. So we talked about regular polygons, meaning all the sides and all the angles are the same. For a regular polyhedron, um, the first thing it is convex, convex, meaning it's not concave. It doesn't go in on itself. The faces are all identical, regular polygonal regions with the same number of edges meeting at each vertex. Okay. So if you have a regular polyhedron, then it means all the faces are congruent. They're all congruent faces, all right? Um, you'll see this with pyramids uh, because you can have a triangular pyramid. You'll see this with prisms because you can have a cube, all right? A cube would be an example. Regular tetrahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron. They've given you some examples of regular ones there. Um, and then hidden in there, it gives you some information about why they're named, what they're named here. Um, Platonic solids is what these are called. Uh, this is from a book written by Euclid. We're talking way back Old Testament time here that Euclid would have written this, okay? Um, and he referred to Plato, the Greek philosopher, um, 
in his book of elements. And his elements actually described these shapes and he referred to Plato for those. And so they are called platonic solids, platonic solids. Regular polyhedra are now known as platonic solids. All right, so that is another name for regular polyhedra. Regular polyhedron are also called platonic solids because of the reference that Euclid made to Plato in his writings, all right? So I want you to try some of the naming here, some of the naming on the bottom of page 42, some of those namings there. One through four, answer all of those, and then 10, 12, and 14, classify by its most specific type. So for one through four, they wanted us to classify the figure as a cylinder or cone and as a polyhedron. For this one, pentagonal pyramid and a hexahedron. Pentagonal pyramid and a hexahedron. All right. Um, name the vertex and its base. Uh, the vertex was M, and you could have just listed like they did here the... Um, the A, B, C, D, E region. You didn't have to like um, name it. Or you could have said um, Pentagon and listed A, B, C, D, E. Uh, how many lateral faces did he, does each figure contain and what kind of polygon bounds each lateral face? Um, five. There's five lateral faces and those are triangles. The lateral faces for this one was triangles. All right. And then how many vertices does the polyhedron have? It has six, all right, six. Um, they are gonna count this, but they're also gonna count each point where your segments go into a point there. Each time that your segments go into a point, those are your vertices, so you're gonna have six there. Here, you're looking for most specific, most specific. Uh, this first one, hexagonal prism. This is a hexagonal prism. And it is also an octahedron, also an octahedron, all right? And then the next one is also a type of prism. In this case, it's triangular prism, and they specified that it was a regular triangular prism. Um, penta pentahedron, pentahedron. Um, pentahedron for this one. All right. And then the last one, the last one is simply a cone. It does not have a, um, any type of base that you could classify it as. So, um, you're just going to call it a cone. It's a type of cone. All right. Questions on those. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create our own tessellation, all right?